In this video, we're going to take a look at a Cambridge Computer Science 9618 question that's pretty popular on the Paper 3 exam, and that's about declarative programming. So let's learn a little bit about it and walk through a question together. So declarative programming is a form of programming in which steps are not written. There is no series of steps or writing an algorithm for a program to follow. The kind of programming you are probably used to is what is known as procedural or imperative. It's a series of steps are written to output data. Now, another form you are probably familiar with is object-oriented programming. Now, in AS and later this year in A, you will or have have done trace tables for assembly language. This is known as low-level programming. So you have declarative, you have procedural, where steps are broken down into procedures or subs or methods. You have imperative, which is step-by-step. -step. So procedural imperative, they count those as the same thing. You have object-oriented programming, and you have low-level uh, programming. Those are your programming paradigms. Now, this programming, declarative programming, features not how to manipulate or process data, but what needs to be done with it, and the compiler figures that out. Now, this will most likely be on your paper three exam for Computer Science 9618. Now, it used to be on paper four in 9608, but now since paper four is 100% programming, you're gonna find it on paper three. It's worth a lot of points, so let's walk through a question together so you can maximize the amount of points you get on your paper three exam. And here we see that first question, a declarative language is used to represent the following facts and rules about animals. And uh, they give us several uh, examples here, and they give us a little table to show how it's read. For example, a dog has the feature, it drinks milk, dog has a feature that it has lungs, tuna has a feature that it has gills, and uh, so on. You wanna be familiar with this as possible to make it as easy and as less stressful uh, as possible. Do not just get fooled into the fact saying, oh, you know what? They're gonna give me this table right here. I'll be able to figure it out on test day. There's a lot of small things, and the more you practice things, the easier they're always going to be. There is no secret to passing your uh, Cambridge uh, papers. The, uh, there's no secret at all. It's just putting in the work and being uh, prepared. And that's why you're here, and we wanna make it seem as easy as possible. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at that first uh, question here. So it says, more facts are to be included. These, these are facts right here. A bird has wings, a bird lays eggs. Those are facts, and we need to put them inside our declarative programming language. And there's some rules uh, for that. You can't have spaces, you gotta have periods. So um, you'll see these periods, those are stop commands. You gotta have those, and forgetting those can cost you an easy point. So a bird has wings and a bird lays eggs. Write the additional clauses to record these facts. Well, on test day, you wanna follow this same format that they give you, a fish. We're not talking about a fish, we're talking about a bird. So I'll substitute fish out for bird. What is the effect about the fish? It lives in water. What's the effect about the bird? Well, one fact is that it lays eggs. I put in my stop command to let it know that the fact is done. And then I put the other fact, a bird has wings. Notice there are no spaces, there are no capital letters. Capital letters represent a variable. So if I put a capital B at the beginning of bird, it's not gonna show that as a fact, it's gonna show that as a variable or a goal. All right, let's move on and uh, continue. So here, an eagle has all the features of a bird. Well, what does a bird do? I look back at my previous answer. A bird lays eggs, a bird has wings. Write the additional clauses to record this fact that an eagle has all the features of a bird. Well, how did they show features? Well, a dog has a feature that it drinks milk. A horse has a feature that it has lungs. It's showing us several examples, so I'm gonna use feature. What animal am I gonna put in after feature? That would be the eagle. What are the two features of an eagle? That it lays eggs and has wings. And just like that, I've picked up another two points. Do not forget these periods. Easy, easy to uh, forget that. So when you put that dot on your paper, Go ahead and uh, you know, make it a little more bold so it's easy uh, to see. That way you get your full points. Let's move on to the next part of this exam question. So it says, using the variable capital B, the goal, feature B drinks milk. So this reads B has the feature drinks milk. When you put this in your declarative programming language, it looks to see 
for the animal that has the feature drinks milk. Well, a dog has that feature. If there are multiple ones, it will return multiple uh, animals that do that. So it says, write the result returned by the goal. B has the feature that it lives in water. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna look at my feature section of the test they gave me, and I'm gonna look for what lives in water. I see that clause four has that, tuna lives in water. I scan the rest of it, and I see clause six also has that. Now when, I, and when it outputs this, it's gonna output tuna first, followed by crab. How do I show that? I write tuna, I put a comma, and then I write crab, and just like that. I've picked up another two points on my paper three exam. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the next part of the question. So this says, using the variable uh, B, the goal, that's the one we just did, now it wants us to write a goal using the variable C to find the feature or features of tuna. So in the first one, B was used to find the animal that has the feature of living in water, and that's how we got tuna and crab. Now they want us to find the features of tuna, and they want us to use variable capital C, and it must be capital because it is a variable. That's how you represent variables in the declarative programming uh, language. So I look for uh, tuna, so I see tuna lives in water, tuna has gills, so I need to represent that. They want to do it by the variable C, so all I do is I write feature tuna comma capital C and I make sure it has a capital C. There's no period here because it is not a fact. It is simply a goal. So we write feature tuna C and we've picked up another two points on our paper three exam. Just they're giving us free points here, free points here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next part. So I put up our answer because it will help us answer this one. An animal is a bird if it lays eggs and it has wings. Now, if we were using procedural programming, we would have an if-then statement. Declarative languages don't have this. Is a bird X? X is a bird if it meets this criteria. So it says a animal is a bird if it lays eggs and it has wings. Okay, well we know a bird lays eggs and has wings. We know an e eagle has a feature that lays eggs. Eagle has a feature that it has wings. We can say an eagle is a bird. By using that, I can use three variables, X representing the bird, Y for the feature, and then Z to sh make sure for the second feature. So let's take a look at how this works. So we write feature X, Y. X is our eagle. We're saying eagle has the feature that it lays eggs, and we wanna make sure that the bird for Y, we wanna make sure our bird lays eggs. This will be true. This will be true. Because it checks to see, okay, let's check an eagle. An eagle, has the feature that it lays eggs, that returns true, and a bird lays eggs. It checks this condition, sees that it's true. But that's not the only thing, because it's not just if it lays eggs. A bird also has, we have to check to see if it has wings. So we check the second feature. X, remember we said is eagle. An eagle has the feature that it has wings. That's what Z is, and then we check to make sure a bird has wings. That is how it's written. You're always going to use three variables. One of the most uh, the most common variables they want you to use are X, Y, and Z. You definitely don't want to use A, B, and C because B and C were used earlier in the exam. So just use X, Y, and Z. You got to use X because they give that uh, to you here. But what you want to do is when you get to this question, start plugging it in, okay? An eagle has the feature that it lays eggs. Well, eagle, that's the bird, lays eggs is one feature. Then we gotta check to make sure that this feature Y is a feature of a bird. Well, then that's true. So now we gotta check the second feature. So not too bad there. And that's another way to pick up three points on your exam. Let's take a look at the last part of this uh, section of the test. So this is part D, the last part of the declarative programming uh, section of the exam. It says declarative programming and object-oriented programming are two examples of programming paradigms. Define the term programming paradigm. Well, you should know from uh, studying that a programming paradigm is how a programming language is classified based on its style and features. Does it follow a series of steps? If so, it's procedural or imperative. Is it 
tracing assembly language? Is it using ADD, LDX, LDI, um, LDD? Is it using that? If so, it's assembly language. We can't use declarative and object-oriented programming. That's no problem. We'll pick the other two. Low-level, which is the assembly language, and procedural, which is also known as imperative. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next programming video.